This session is going to be focused on Cloudflare, um, the Cloudflare network, Cloudflare developer platform, and basically Cloudflare and its products. And uh, we have here Stefan, who's also Hello. part of the French Paris office and one of the first uh, Cloudflareians to be uh, trained on the RAS and an old Cloudflare veteran. I don't know how many years it's now, like five, six? Six years and three months. Okay. Exactly. So one of the best people to ask questions about Cloudflare uh, as a whole. And yeah, I'll, I'll just let you take it. I'll be here. Um, I'll let you know we have 20 minutes and then 10 minutes for uh, questions. And obviously, you know the scope. We have here um, developers and technical people from all around the globe coming for a four days training program on the RAS. Um, so you can be as technical as you want. That's the other right. So let's. Great. This is being recorded. I try to deliver uh, on the facts. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you all, hey everybody. Um, I'm Stéphane Nouvelon, based in Paris, and I'm a solution architect at Codefer. Uh, it's been six years I'm at Codefer, and I look after the everything app services, serverless platform, zero trust, and the network services. And I'm glad to deliver that session. To that, basically, the goal is to take the perspective and move up a bit from the Zaras um, focus a bit, and kind of explain where is Codefer and what we're doing, and telling you a bit about the network uh, as well. Um, but maybe to start with, so about what we do, so if I had to summarize use cases to sea level, because we do a lot of things at Codefair and we'll go through uh, that in detail, um, we have mainly five use cases. So the first thing is to secure hybrid work. So everything about networks, about your employees, replacing VPNs with what we call the SASE framework and zero trust. We can accelerate application performance with the network. We can have it secure how to expose application publicly with having them secure and scaling. We can protect the network. So we are talking about like proper infrastructures, how to basically secure a data center. We can do that with Cloudflare. And finally, maybe you're familiar with that if you're developers, um, building apps and being creative on the platform. And that one is very important because I think Yair uh, and Lucas already delivered that to you, but where does that has come from? The solution and the stack has been built on Cloudflare Workers. Cloudflare Workers is the serverless engine we have running at the edge, where basically that, it, that is your creativity um, field. Use the edge of Cloudflare as a programmable edge to basically compute functions, store logic, objects, KV, uh, relational database at the edge, and we'll go uh, into, into more detail uh, with that. So one thing to know about Cloudflare, we are a cloud company. Right. We do not, not run boxes. We do not give VMs to customers. Every, everything runs in the edge. And I like to kind of like um, restate that because some questions are, uh, are coming towards this line. So everything is running at the edge. The network is gigantic. It literally, um, it spans across 285 plus cities, including China. So we can basically deploy whatever composable service you run at the edge directly within China. Totally seamless. There is no second network. Exactly everything you run outside China will run in China as long as you have an ICP license. Uh, the interconnectivity, quite a techy thing, but quite important, and you, you will understand why. Cloudflare network is able to interconnect with residential ISPs, with IX, with backbone networks, and with transit providers. So we basically shorten the distance from whatever that, that is exposed and the consumer because Cloudflare sits in between and we are well interconnected. As we speak, we are the most interconnected network in the planet. We count about like 11K uh, interconnections in the network. So literally we can go with one hope from any single source on the internet to any single locations. And last but not least, capacity. As you know, we do security. Security is quite big with, uh, with Cloudflare. Uh, the biggest DDoS attack I think we blocked was uh, accounting for 47 million requests per second. In terms of volume, there was about like uh, 40, 40 or 50 terabit per second. Uh, so we need to run that capacity and provide that, capability, that, that scalability uh, inside the network. Um, in terms of architecture, uh, I do not have any slides about that, but I think that's interesting for you to know that. Um, Cloudflare network is fully integrated. And from day one, we adopted one architecture principle that is quite easy. Everything needs to be defined as software and everything needs to run everywhere. So from a code perspective, that's quite a monolith we run. Literally, that same piece of code is running on in any single facilities we have and any single servers. So there is no complex question to know. When you compose a service with Cloudflare, I want some CDN, including Zara's, working some, uh, working some serverless functions. That's always going to be computed in first pass. There is no complex back and forth inside the network because the CDN part is doing, um, it's done in that area and some other. So that's fully integrated everywhere. 
In terms of scale, uh, interesting, maybe not for Zaros, but in terms of security and security, what is important is the strat intelligence, the capacity your security partner has to have a vision on what happens on the internet and to basically react quickly and save your potential attack and threats. So just to give you a number, we block about 136 billion threats per day, network level, volumetric attack, application layer attack, API scraping, any of the bad stuff. In terms of interconnectivity and the reach we have, we are within 50 milliseconds of 95% of the uh, internet uh, connected population. That's quite important because everything you serve with Cloudflare, where Cloudflare is used to expose securely and in a fast manner networks or application, your consumers are always going to be connected to a Cloudflare pop really next to them. In terms of that time, easy to read, that's not five, six, seven, nines, that's 100%, right? Very easy to read, 100% all the time and for everything. And finally, in terms of vision, um, Talking about the web, so web HTTP and HTTPS, we see about 20% of the internet every day. So what it means for us in terms of network as we speak right now, I was looking at that uh, in the backend. As we speak right now, we serve 43 million HTTP requests on the network, and that's on per second basis. Uh, I think we go even above that. In terms of offering, um, we've got four main pillars. So the first one is the Cloudflare Zero Trust Services. Zero Trust Services is everything about network transformation, how to secure your remote workers, how to replace VPN, how to basically do software-defined network in Cloudflare and implement Zero Trust, right? The Cloudflare Network Services, that's everything regarding how to make your infrastructure secure, right? DDoS as a service, SD1, uh, firewall as a service, running IDS, IPS on top of your infrastructure. In terms of the layer, we talk about the lower uh, level, layers we are quite well known on the layer 7 piece especially http so the network services is focusing on the lower level of the layers cloudflare application services that's where zaraz sits that's everything regarding serving applications in a fast and secure uh, manner it does include the work it does include uh, the ddos the balancing but management authentication zaraz etc and finally the last bit and there is a reason why that big blue square is set transversal that's because that composable platform and programmable platform is basically usable for any other services. So Workers is the serverless platform we have. Well, basically, sorry, you can run any function at the edge, right? Your own logic. If these functions, they need to be stateful, you can save state at the edge directly. You can save object if you're used to use S3. We've got L2, which is basically the same, implements an S3 API, and that runs directly at the edge. And again, global network, exactly the same we've just described. That network is applicable for anything you compose and you use uh, with Cloudflare. In terms of results, these five use cases, they give the following results. They are measurable. We are very observable. So everything you use at Cloudflare, you get a dashboard to basically review what is the state of your implementation and what, what are the results. So we deliver a faster web experience, right? There is part of that. We cut the number of third party scripts, we run them directly at the edge. We reduce this, the attack surface by basically blocking the request to go to the origin directly and using Cloudflare as an umbrella at the lower level for IP, TCP communications, but at the HTTP level as well. We speed up business transformation. Everything that really needs before um, on top of the rack solutions like uh, firewalls, like WAF, load balancers, you can basically compose them directly in the cloud. Your only task is to connect your origin with Cloudflare, and we'll go through the detail of how it works, very easy. So everything is done in the, in the edge in the cloud, and the scalability is offered to you as a service. Uh, I didn't mention, but the network scale we have is growing by uh, about 50% every year, right? So when I joined Cloudflare six years ago, you can imagine that the network was very small. It's really well to city and WAF, and I think we had a map with pins where we would add a pin every time we were adding a data center. Right now, I mean, I cannot even like, uh, uh, I cannot even like uh, stay on top of the numbers. We basically have a slide that updates uh, automatically. And finally, we improve uh, the bandwidth cost for many reasons because we are well interconnected with many destinations. So we can actually set Cloudflare as a free, almost free interconnections with your consumers. One example of that is you use GCP and Azure behind the scenes because we set cables with these partners. They are like bandwidth partners to us. We don't use transit, so that bandwidth is basically free. What we've built is the bandwidth alliance, where Azure and GCP, they give you back the cost of your request because you use Cloudflare in front of their services. So for GCP, it means a cut by 75% for your request. And on Azure, we are about 25%. And the bandwidth alliance 
is having a lot of partners like this, TCP and Azure are just two examples. At Clutter, we tend to innovate a lot. So as I said, six years ago, we are doing the and Challenge. We are li literally having maybe 20 pops. We're having 300 persons. We are doing CDN, WAF, and DDoS. And what we tend to do at Cloudflare is to enrich the portfolio, like building new services, like literally SASE network transformation is quite new. The serverless, um, serverless product is also quite new. But what we tend to do is to implement the last and the most innovative protocols. So you as a customer, if you use a service, it doesn't mean that we are only going to innovate to try uh, to, to get you buying your product. Even the product you use, we tend to innovate with them. Like one example of that is the implementation of the protocols we have at Cloudflare. So if you use the secured exposition with Cloudflare, quick HTTP3, the new TLS ciphers and protocols, we directly implement them uh, for you. And that's your innovation. Stefan, just to, sorry to interrupt you, one, one uh, small thing. Uh, mm -hmm. You mentioned that Zaraz is part of uh, application, application services. It wasn't announced yet, but Zaraz is going to be part of actually the developer platform uh, very soon. Uh, oh. We're coming, uh, we, we noticed that most of our users are actually the same users and uh, mm -hmm. the, the new pricing model of Zaraz that is, uh, we'll, we'll speak about this uh, later in the training, but the new pricing model is gonna be part of the developer platform as well. Thanks for mentioning that. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I wanted to deep dive a bit because especially um, I understand from here that you are all or almost all um, from a developer background. So what is very important and that's quite big at Cloudflare, we are accelerating so much on the developer's platform. And the developer's platform is so innovative, so disruptive, that even for ourselves, new product we build as part of the stack or features we sell, we actually build Cloudflare on Cloudflare. That's quite amazing to see. Like for example, the Zero Trust platform Cloudflare Access. It runs on workers. Zara's it runs on worker. And the caching part is right now being rewritten from Nginx, which is part of the stack and quite legacy for us. And with the project Flame, we basically use the front line as the worker backends. So that platform is quite disruptive. If you look at the analysis, the Forester and everything, the places literally top to the right, and there are reasons for that. So first, there is only one region at Cutter. Everything you code, WebAssembly, JavaScript, you push a function, you push a blob storage, the region by default is world. So we never ask you to choose a region, and if you need to region, you need to set replication with the cost that, that does not imply it. Everything is global. We started with the functions, right? Running a function at the edge with the V8 isolate is great, but when it comes to the production use cases, you might need to store things, to store states, to have them orchestrated, to have them with velocity, like a key value store to store, to, to uh, sorry, to read and serve a high volume of a uh, key. And we recently uh, accelerated on many other things. Like you can resize image, you can store things, you can resize image uh, within the platform. You can even set your own observability with, um, with the workers analytics engine. And we're not gonna stop there. Like that's on quarter basis. We do add many other products and features that is basically serving what? Uh, the developer's experience. We want the platform to be fast, easy to develop with, to integrate with your ecosystem and uh, to be rich enough for you to create any innovative ideas. And again, the platform is the same, no different network. That's exactly the same network that runs any single features we have at Kafka. So now <clears throat> a big concept we have, as you understood, at Kafka we run a network that is basically sitting between what is to be exposed and what needs to be consumed, uh, what is going to consume what you're trying to protect or, or, or accelerate. So you can see that as a reverse proxy for HTTP. I think you understood that we do way more things at the network level, but we're going to maybe focus on HTTP. And you need to know that not only we are a proxy, but the way to integrate traffic with Cloudflare is via the DNS. So you know that on the internet, any single HTTP request always starts with a DNS request, except that if you go with an IP, HTTP, semicolon, slash, slash, an IP, everything will have a friendly uh, user friendly host name that host name needs to be resolved. And you need to know that Cloudflare is the one of the biggest or the biggest DNS authoritative and resolver in the planet. And it starts from there. So the concept of orange cloud and gray cloud basically is a DNS concept, right? So what we do at Cloudflare is quite magic. So the screenshot you have on top is literally coming from the dashboard where you set your zones and the DNS records for your zones. An orange cloud means that your origin IP will never be visible to anyone on the internet. We will always serve the IPs for the service you pay Cloudflare to serve. So that proxy can happen. So the consumer will be given IPs to Cloudflare. Cloudflare will do the proxy, run all of your functions. If the traffic is clean and needs to go back to the origin, we will reach out to that IP, right? So that's like client Cloudflare origin. With the gray cloud, that's a simple DNS um, resolution. So if we have the IP one, two, three, four as a gray cloud, 
if I go to the internet and I go to a terminal, do a dig data snake, Cloudflare will return one, two, three, four. There are use cases for that, especially your names carrying protocol we do not support, or maybe the one you don't want to proxy, right? Uh, so that's why we, we, we give you the opportunity to run orange cloud or gray cloud. One thing I didn't mention, but about the control plane and what is one differentiator we have is that everything we did talk about, you do a change, that's going to be taken into account in less than three seconds worldwide. So you never wait for something to replicate. That's easy and quick. And finally, how to proxy your domain. I mean, where to start from zero? I can imagine you have an account already, but the three steps, get an account on Cloudflare, that's for free, declare the domain. And as you can imagine, you declare the domain, but you need to prove Cloudflare you've got the ownership. So you will be, you will be asked to create records at your register, change the NM servers to the one provided by Cloudflare, so we can be the authoritative for the domain. And when it is done, it will take some time for us to replicate. When this is done, you basically have access to the TNS um, zone on Cloudflare, and you can compute any single configuration you want uh, in, the, in the dashboard. And with that, I think I'm just on time. <laughs> and I'm done. Wow, you are what great. a time being. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, for everyone to know, the reason I asked Stefan to also explain the concept of uh, Orange Cloud is that if your site um, is proxy than what we call Orange Cloud, and then it means that you don't need to do anything to start using Zoraz. You basically need to only configure your, your first third-party tool, and because we because you're Orange Cloud, we will be able to inline the Zoraz code, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, with that, I'm gonna um, uh, let you open mics now, and we can start the Q and A. Sean, good to see you. How are you? It's good seeing you both. How are you guys? Great, hey, great. Good, hey, good. random question. So in the what I've noticed with Webflow using Cloudflare as the DNS provider, when you proxy, Webflow uses Let's Encrypt for their SSL. So when you proxy it, it, it creates a redirect loop where you get stuck. And it's I've I've messed with the, the SSL settings in Cloudflare to try and solve it, but like I've even tried to turn it off, but the SSL protection on Webflow changed the DNS ports. It's just there's a hot mess between Webflow and Cloudflare right now, and the only way to solve it is to turn to, to go to a gray cloud. So I was hoping you guys could give me some insights on how to solve this. So because it's it's been plaguing me. Unless you're on an enterprise plan on Webflow, because then you can mm -hmm. use an origin certificate, but you can't do that on unless you're paying, you know, twenty thousand dollars a year for hosting, which nobody wants to pay. So mm -hmm. what do you? Yeah, so, um... So what you're saying about like the kind of like an infinite loop of redirections, it kind of ring a bell. So what you need to know when it comes to a consumer to origin involving a proxy is that at the SSL layer, two negotiations are being done. The client does the SSN and check with Cloudflare, but Cloudflare will be told what to do with the origin. Should we go plain text, HTTP? Should we go again with HTTPS? And generally when that redirect loop happens, that's because the backend impose the request to be either HTTP or HTTPS. Some origins, they say, oh, you come with HTTP, come back with HTTPS, or the opposite. Some of them, that's kind of weird. But when you ask the HTTPS, they say, no, please come back to plain text. That's the only protocol I can talk, right? And because if Cloudflare is set to talk one version of the protocol that is getting a redirect at the backend, everything coming from the origin will be served to the client. So that's 301 or 302 will be served, redirected again and again and again and again. Google Chrome, I think, limitates the loop to 10 redirections. So you're going to have a nice message. So at the zone level, for the SSL terminations, you've got two main concepts. What should the certificate be? Come with your own certificate, ask Cloudflare to manage it with Google Trust Services or MS Encrypt. And the second thing is, OSSL should be done. What are the ciphers available to the client? What needs to be the ciphers at the origin? Do you want to talk plain text or HTTPS? Do you want to validate the certificate at the backend? Because generally, the backend, you don't want a paid certificate. You will use a self-signed certificate. By default, if we see that, that's not coming from a publicly certified authority. We block the traffic. So each of these configurations, they are available at the zone level within the SSL TLS section. Within the SSL TLS section, we did split that into what I said, TLS with the client, TLS with the origin, and everything is, is there. Um, I cannot comment in more detail, but what you described um, rings a bell. And that infinite loop somehow has to be coming from the origin and oh, it does accept HTTP or HTTPS. Yeah. OK, so I got to figure, yeah, because if I can't use the same origin certificate on Cloudflare and the point of origin, like is, there's got to be some sort of way to get around that. But then also the question is, if I mean, if I turn off HTTPS on the origin server, right? If mm -hmm. I turn it off, so it's just plain, isn't that going to leave a vulnerability on the origin server too then to get uh, that, That's a good point. 
yeah, that's a good point. So first, the certificate between the origin and the edge, they do not need to be the same. Okay. That's another problem. As long as you can set up TLS communications trusted from the client to the origin, they don't have to be the same. Not a problem. But then when you say, if I don't get the origin to talk plain text, that's a very good point you are making. If your interconnection with Cloudflare is using the public internet, it means that you're flowing plain text data over the internet. So me, as a bad person, if I do a man in the middle, I can literally tap onto you and see everything you're discussing. That's why at Cloudflare, we do have many uh, interconnection solutions. We can talk about mutual TLS authentications, we can set some tunnels. And in some cases, that's very interesting to go back to plain text because customers, when it comes to very velocity backends, like high volumes, SSL is a cost, is a compute cost. So if you can set that federation on a secure manner via an overlay IPsec tunnel and you throw plain text through it, that's okay. If it's through the internet, that's a good point you are making. That's not secure. Let's not do that. Okay, yeah, there's, I, I could go, I don't want to waste all the time because there might be other people with questions, but yeah, there's there's just something weird about trying to get that because it, I don't know, anyway, I'll bug you guys on it later, but I appreciate it. I don't your, think uh, that it, there is a biggie. Like, I've never seen, I challenge you to find me a, a, like a use case where SSL cannot be done properly at Cloudflare. I've seen so many web SSL configuration. You've got all of the tools to make it work. Um, yeah, I, I'm not concerned. Yes, Ken. You are muted. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Hello again. Uh, so uh, you guys mentioned in like part of the slides, you probably gonna uh, end up uh, gonna be stable. It's gonna be pricing again, like R two or pages. They have a uh, like you do gonna pay some or after usage or something. Or you ask you ask for the Raz. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so uh, I will ask you to wait with this question because we are going to explain the new model uh, in a specific session, but. Uh, it's it's a bit complex. We'll we'll explain it when we get there. <laughs> okay, thank you. No worries. Sorry. Uh, just if we'll dive into that now, it will be endless discussion. Um, we'll make sure to make it very simple for you by the end of the of the training. Uh, any more questions? Yes, Pedro. Yes. Uh, we will be able to offer Zaras as a Cloudflare SaaS product inside our app you mean if you can sorry so i think we lost yeah 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 i'm back sorry you're back <laughs> yeah uh you're asking if you were asking if uh you can use the ras as part of uh cloudflare for SaaS configuration yes yeah the answer the, the short answer is yes the more complex answer is that when you do that you probably need uh, different pixel ids and tracking IDs for Google Analytics and things like that for each and every domain. So the short answer is yes, you can configure it. Longer answer is it's not that simple because you don't want to mess up IDs between different domains, et cetera. Um, so it really depends on your specific setup. OK. And then we will be able to load a configuration file. So today, the only way of configuring Terraz is via the dashboard. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to open it via API or we might have an option to upload your JSON, but basically we don't want you to directly change the JSON because it's it, it's opening uh, a lot of issues. And uh, we know that third-party analytics is sometimes like the core of uh, someone's business. So uh, we uh, I, currently we think, we, we try to avoid it. We think it's creating more issues than what it's, uh, uh, than bringing value basically. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so unless there is one quick question, I think we're exactly on time. Um, Stefan, that was awesome. It's always nice to see how, how how much you're familiar with everything that's going on at Cloudflare. So thanks very much for joining us. And for everyone, before we finish, we'll see you tomorrow. Uh, all of you should have the invites. If you don't, feel free to send me an email and I'll make sure to uh, add you to the invite. We're going to have three sessions tomorrow. Uh, and then an open Q&A session at the end of the day. So uh, if you are left with questions, please write them down and save them for tomorrow. I also encourage you, if you have any feedback for us for how to improve for tomorrow, please feel free to send me and Luca an email um, and suggest things that can improve the training. We're trying to uh, be very adaptive and uh, make sure we are all uh, uh, spending our time, our time well. So uh, it was a pleasure hosting you, uh, Stefan, and thanks everyone for joining us today. 
Um, Thanks, Phil. Tomorrow. <laughs>